we got a little bit of a taste of where the guys are going and their commitment to building a killer culture for you guys and making this a place that you absolutely love to come to work, that you feel inspired, you feel motivated, and that you feel like you've got some of your best mates here that have your back and that we are blurring the lines between work and play because they say if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. So how can we help make that true for you? How do we create you an environment where it doesn't, you don't wake up on Monday morning and go, oh, fuck my life, I couldn't be bothered going there. You wake up on Monday mornings, even with your hangover, and you're like, yeah, I can't wait to go and find out what they did and to move this dial forward and have these impacts. So the way that we do that, I, you've, you've probably heard of companies having like a vision, mission, and values. Has everyone heard that sort of saying? Yeah. What I found, though, is vision, mission, and values rolled out by corporates often end up being wanky words on a wall and something put together by marketing teams to make it sound fancy to their clients. They're like, oh, people will love that integrity and honesty and we believe in this. And it's like, no, you don't. And no one ever actually lives into it. So with the work that I do um, from all the studies that I've done, we've pulled together and taken that to another evolution. And instead of having a vision, mission and values, we have a purpose, a mission, a five-year obsession, sometimes a two-year obsession. So with response, we're going to have a two-year obsession because we've got a shorter time frame that we know that we can make some impacts. But a five-year obsession and a set of virtues that you guys can really feel like you belong to and step into. My belief, it's going to sound weird, my belief about values is that they are people's beliefs. So if you have a set of values, like everyone has a set of values, right? Do you all have your own values that you live your life by or you judge people by or, you know, a set of standards and a code of conduct? Well, I believe that you can't force your beliefs onto anybody else. But virtues is something that was, us was way back in the day made more as a construct for groups. And a virtue is something, by virtue, that you live into, that you strive towards to step into. So it may not always be your innate nature, but it's something that you've chosen and that you've committed to working towards. So with the Academy Group, instead of having vision, mission, values and words on a wall that are wanky marketing things that might sound good to clients, we're gonna have a purpose, a mission, some fi a five-year obsession and a set of virtues that we'll all develop together today on how we can live into and use that as our code of conduct and how the business is going to roll moving forward, not only with the team, but with the members. And what I, my hope is that you take that out into the world and into your orbit, and it's the ripple effect with the, some of the five people that you spend the most time with as well. And that through that, we can all raise humanity. When we talk about our purpose, the purpose is the, the North Star, it's the guiding star, it's the reminder of what we're here to do. It's what keeps us on track and tries to stop the stars from getting shiny thinged too quickly. Or the craters running off with amazing epic ideas before we've implemented the first one. So we we'll use the purpose to guide us. And it's something that we can ask ourselves every day, am I making an impact? Am, am I contributing to the business achieving this purpose? So the purpose of the Academy Group is we exist to elevate the perception of tradespeople everywhere. So everyone heard Greg's backstory and the reason why it's so important to him to elevate the perception of tradespeople and obviously starting with electricians. Now, instead of just having electricians, we want to be able to look towards the five-year obsession and where we're going in the future, which is why we've broadened it out into tradespeople. Okay, so the mission. So when we, like the old construct of vision and mission, vision used to be the summit of where you were trying to get to and the mission was literally like, you go to war, you go on a mission, right? So the mission is the, how do we get there? And what are we taking a call to arms at? What are we really working together? Because this is really big, right? This is really big and how do we quantify it? How do we know that we're doing this? The mission is really like, okay, how do we do this? What are we doing? What's the steps and, and what's the tangible thing that we can work towards?
These are, these are all really awesome, right? But again, it's really hard to quantify and to measure. So how do we know each day we're moving forward, each month we're moving forward, each year we're making progress to actually achieving the mission and the purpose? We do that with the five-year obsession. Five years because it's long enough for us to actually make a big difference and to, to gain momentum, implement new things, change industries. It's really hard to change an industry or change the perception of a whole group of humans in one year, right? You'd be running pretty fast. We need a big army. So five years gives us enough time to actually turn the ship. But we will break that down into each year what the actual goals are that are going to help us to get there.